a game that had a tough venture of living up to its N64 predecessor, Super Mario Sunshine had a development cycle that saw the game constantly changing and building this tropical world. And this is especially prevalent within its maps that go as early as its very first trailer. From different map layouts, unused shines, and entire maps that were tossed out, today on Cut Content, we shall explore the beta maps of Super Mario Sunshine. If you enjoy this video, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button too to further support us and keep creating new videos. When development began, the director of the game, Yoshiaki Koizumi, wished to make a more detailed townscape, a sort of port town. This ultimately being the basis for making the game's hub world, Delfino Plaza. Which this very first trailer shows this desire from the get-go of a rather detailed map featuring Mario running through a street of many houses and buildings featuring some NPCs, with one even being a realistic human, many years before Mario Odyssey at that, and even a mysterious enemy, almost none of which ever found their way into the final game. While the aesthetic definitely screams Delfino Plaza, its layout clearly looked completely different, as there were no long winding streets in the final game's version, no central platform of this size anywhere either, along with numerous other details including the existence of an ice cream cart, a soccer ball, and even a water barrel being present at this stage, which later were removed. In addition, some textures had a clear difference, with a different sky texture, a lower quality water, and cruder models for the game's citizens, the Piantas. Now the interesting part to all this is that, the map did survive to an extent into the final game, only what is known as the height map. This being a map that shows the height of all structures within the map here, which gives us a clear outline of how that earlier map looked. Showing clearly that long street Mario ran through, the roof he was on, and even that central platform. Now because this exists, a team of modders called the Eclipse team took it upon themselves to recreate that old version of Delfino Plaza using this very height map, and we finally have it, alive and breathing. Being a near perfect match from the hall with the Piantas, the street Mario runs down, the roof Mario runs on, and even the platform with the water barrel and the central platform with the soccer ball. Now to address the elephant in the room, let's talk about the sole enemy that appears here. This is called a Hinokuri, and still exists in the data of the game too, which the Eclipse team went as far as to restore back in. The enemy still has full collision too, and all it does is run around and spawn the enemies, the strolling stews, and goobles. The only way to defeat it appears to be to spray its eye on the top of its head with water until it sheds its skin and runs in a horrifying manner. Afterwards you can simply just jump and kill it off. A rather simple enemy despite its size really, may have been the game's original boss in place of the polluted prana plant at the time. The long streets were clearly designed around it for it to have a path to run on flawlessly, which later on when they decide to completely redesign Delfino Plaza into a much more complex town without a long winding street, it really couldn't fit in and so it may have been scrapped for that reason. Now in addition to the town itself, there were details around that town that were rather noticeable in the trailer and adapted by the Eclipse team too, including the towers that can be briefly seen here and these boats next to this other grassier town nearby. Which brings us to Bianco Hills. Now while we have had a height map for Delfino Plaza, this other map shown here in the trailer wasn't part of that and would point to it being another level entirely, this being likely the original Bianco Hill. A big indicator of this being the matching aesthetic of houses, grass, and even a long path. And seems even this joker was supposed to appear here too. Potentially again in place of the polluted prana plant. And making perfect use of the long path. You also can see the towers of Beta Delfino Plaza 2 here, showing how much closer the towns were together at one point. While no height map exists for this, what we instead have is an old graffiti map of how the graffiti would have been dispersed through the level, in what is a horrifying manner. But when you remove that layer, you see the full beta map of Bianco Hill, which when compared to this wide shot of the map, it perfectly fits. The pool, the house, the fountain, the winding path, and even the tail at the back. Of course what is most notable about both this map and Delfino Plaza here is how small they were next to their final incarnations. While they may be separate maps, 
I wouldn't be surprised if in fact these could have even been one map at one point with how close in proximity they are and would load the other map once close enough. Might explain why this guy also appears here. Maybe he jumps up here at some point while on the run. But now moving past this trailer, we got our first look at the ever lovable Rico Harbor. While the obvious girders are here, the bottom is definitely laid out differently, with a variety of docked boats underneath them. But what's more interesting is that we can clearly see the Beta Delfino Plaza in the distance here, including the towers which once again shows how close these towns were adjacent to one another back then. Other than that, Rico Harbor has some early pollution maps too, for one part of it at least, being the main area here. In this case there are two early maps versus the final one, while the second one looks extremely similar to the final one, with there even being an additional platform here originally, the earliest version lacked the fountain that is here, and had a rounded edge along with some platforms being in different places and a few different shapes to its basic layout. Now there is evidence to say that this map could be a part of this version of Rico Harbor, as the goop texture for it is the same kind of early texture that the Beta Bianco Hill used, thus likely were all from the same stage here. But eventually, these three early maps saw a major revamp, along with the rest of the maps that started to be built around 2002. Delfino Plaza started to look more or less as we know it, taking on its large general and complex appearance. Several small differences still stood, including the existence of Strollin' Stew still here, despite no sign of the big guy, a green warp pipe instead, and what's most interesting is the existence of a green Yoshi here, something not in the final game at all. Maybe the color would have changed based on what fruit it eat? Let alone the polluted prana having a different pattern too. Bianco Hill also started to shape up to look like its final incarnation, but also with small differences too, including different designs and textures for the houses and windmill, prana bonds having black lips, a reddish pokey also being around before it was cut, and the lake area having a pretty different layout, such as these platforms being different. Rico Harbor finally being seen in more of its fullness here, definitely much more resembled its final counterpart, likely now on that second map here. Some minor differences too, including the Gooper Blooper being bluish as opposed to white, and on the girders instead of the helipad, which would have made the fight a lot harder mind you. Otherwise an unused ship containing logs was present, along with this crane that goes unused too, and it seems the rocket nozzle was to be usable here in episode 1 of the level, which wasn't possible in the final game. But in this 2002 period, the newer maps were finally being revealed to the public, including Gelato Beach. Some differences include how the tower lacked that big glowing ball at the top, though the wiggler is clearly walking on something. So unless at new flight, the disco ball just wasn't programmed in yet. Aside from that is the dreaded sandbird's egg missing in the center, and the tower also having pillars instead, the egg in this case being on what became the jump pad later. Now what is more interesting is the presence of electric goop here, something exclusive to Serena Beach. Difference here being that this one doesn't shock Mario, a property added likely when moved to Serena Beach. Noki Bay itself never looked too different from what was shown to us, but there is a pollution map for its underwater section that is hilarious to look at. It looks normal at first, but then you see the word stupid written on the top left here in Japanese. As in, it is stupid why there is pollution underwater, where water is then used underwater to wipe it away. Angry devs. But one very interesting piece to Noki Bay is this underwater structure with a door. It can't be opened, but when looking behind it, there is a mysterious book there. Note that the book is hard coded into the geometry of the level, so likely wasn't ever meant to be picked up or moved. Hard to say what the purpose was but likely was originally just decoration. With Peanut Park, we got another unused pollution map here, which is strange as originally this level was one of the few not to have any goop whatsoever, seems the beach area at least was to have it. The other factor to Peanut Park is this one screenshot here, which showcases an earlier look at the park itself. Many different factors here, including the ferris wheel being of a different design, with a smiley face in the middle, and as well Mecha Bowser is more in the middle of the map here, rather than further back like in the final game. But aside from that, it seems there was also this clamshell that was supposed to be not just in this level but also in Noki Bay. Based on the name included with the model, Noki Gate, some theorized this was a portal to Noki Bay from Peanut Park. 
But not just that, but in the screenshot, the Pianta tree here also appears to have a mouth of sorts. That mouth is believed to be a portal to Pianta village, on the other hand. Speaking of Pianta Village, the one small difference here is once again the presence of a green Yoshi. Now as a bonus, I also would like us to look at the flooded Delfino Plaza. This version that appears for a short period on first look appears to be the same as the final games. However, there are actually several differences here too. These include a barred off jail cell, a different bell tower door, a hidden shine sprite image next to the umbrella near the lighthouse, and interestingly, a manhole in the jail cell. The manhole is is actually in a shot seen in the beta screenshot of the game, meaning that this underwater Delfino Plaza is likely using an earlier version of the map actually. But since we only see it for such a brief period, they then bother swapping it to the final one. On top of that, it seems the 100 coin shine location is located above the Bianco Square statue rather than on a wooden plank in the water. In fact, several stages in the game have unused shine spawn locations for collecting 100 coins in what is an impossible location. These include the Dirty Lake Secret of Bianco Hills, Hotel Lobby Secret of Serena Beach, Casino Secret of Serena Beach, and Red Coin Bottle of Noki Bay all which have it impossible to get 100 coins in, but yet have a spawn point for a shine if one does. My theory is that at one point, they may have had enough coins for this to happen, but once the levels were changed up, this was now an impossible task. With the many maps of Super Mario Sunshine, it is clear how much thought was put into them over and over with them going through major changes and even fine tuning it ever so slightly to perfect the design they had in mind. But alas, this is the tip of the iceberg for the Super Mario Sunshine beta content, as there are numerous objects, enemies, and even audio clips of Mario that go unused. All of which I plan to cover soon, so hit the subscribe button for I plan to be back with more Mario and other games cut content soon. Hit the like button and comment below on whether you preferred any of the features of these beta maps over the final games. So everyone, thank you for watching!